Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. Body Snatching, the industry that shocked a nation. During the 19th century, across many different countries, a dark and disturbing practice emerged in which people would raid graveyards under the cover of darkness. Body snatching was common in some cities, especially those who had influential medical schools inside of them. There was a need at the time for doctors and anatomists to get their hands on corpses in order to perform dissections to spread medical knowledge. Because of this, a whole industry emerged in which many people could get rich in a barbaric and sadistic way. Today, we look at body snatching, the disturbing practice to steal dead bodies. At the beginning of the 19th century, there was a shortage of fresh cadavers that were available for schools of anatomy in England and Scotland. This led to a crisis in education and in performing dissections in universities for learning and spreading knowledge. Because of this, a new form of criminal emerged, the body snatcher, who would also be known as the resurrection man or the sack em up man. These people went up and down England and Scotland raiding churchyards where recent and new burials had occurred. Corpses were then taken from their graves, stripped of their clothes, thrown onto carts and then taken to a professor or university. One hotel in Newcastle, the Turf Hotel became a very busy spot for body snatchers who would visit the place, stopping off either going north or south. From their cart which were parked up, horrific smells would emerge, and these would of course be carrying the corpse. The carts were often on their way to either Edinburgh or Carlisle. One case of someone who stopped off at the Turf Hotel was James Same, a man whose cart was inspected one evening and it was found that liquid was leaking from the cart onto the floor. When the authorities opened the cart, they saw a 19-year-old woman's body, with fluids dripping out of her body. Many discoveries were made of body snatchers, and one of the main centres for body snatching was Edinburgh. At the time, the university in the city was a world-leading anatomical place of study which required a large amount of cadavers in order for experiments and dissections to be carried out. One man, who it's assumed worked at the university as a lecturer, was a man by the name of Mackenzie, who it was believed was awaiting a delivery of cadavers. The body snatchers caused a huge amount of uproar across the country, and the public became suspicious of coaches travelling into towns and cities. Mr Mackenzie's package travelled into York and the driver refused to have the box loaded onto the coach and a crowd then gathered as they thought it contained the body of someone from the churchyard. However, when the box was opened, it was found to be a delivery of ham ready for Christmas, but this illustrates the trepidation people had about the body snatchers. For the grave robbers, it was key that they exhumed only bodies that were only very recently placed into the ground. Within a few days, the decomposition process would take place, and because of this, it meant that people could then not perform dissections on the bodies, so there was a need for fresh corpses, in a sense. And this caused people to take big precautions. Often the family members of a recently deceased individual would guard the burial site 24-7 to then ensure that the grave robbers who were watching did not swoop in. Some body snatchers even went further, developing sneaky tactics in which they would tunnel in from a nearby area to steal the corpse whilst no one was noticing. Families went further, for example placing mort safes over the graves. These were cast iron cages placed onto a grave which prevented anyone from gaining access and the churches were so worried about the desecration of the dead that they rented them out to different families with only the warden having the keys. Also, watchtowers were created in certain churchyards where a guard would be placed to ensure that no one tampered with any graves during the night. In Edinburgh in particular, this was a very big concern especially as many of the churches were incredibly close to the university. Another way of preventing body snatching was the use of the cemetery gun, which worked almost as a trap. 
it would be attached to a trip wire that if anyone went near the grave it would discharge, frightening the grave robber, with a huge crack from the gun. Coffin collars were also used which fastened around the neck of the dead body and attached them to the bottom of the coffin, but these were not always as effective as mort safes. Some body snatchers became famous, such as Edinburgh's Mary Andrew, who even allegedly sold the corpse of his sister after an argument with gang members. A dispute emerged as it was accused that Mary Andrew had shortchanged two men and it was found that he had actually had drawn out plans to possibly remove his sister's body for profit. However, in a weird twist, the two gang members themselves planned to rob the grave, so Andrew hid behind a gravestone when the two men started to exhume his sister's body, and once they had exhumed her out of the ground, Andrew sprung up startling the men so much that they dropped Andrew's sister's body. However, Mary Andrew then allegedly even took his sister's body and sold this on, and he didn't even have to dig her up himself. The gruesome practice was even recorded in diaries of body snatchers. For example, Joseph Naples wrote in 1811 that he would cut off the extremities of these bodies that had started to decay, and would then furthermore sell on these body parts to hospitals in London. It was said that in his diary, one body he exhumed was so decaying that St Thomas's Hospital would not purchase it. So who knows what happened to this corpse? Now one common misconception about body snatching is that the infamous Edinburgh serial killers Burke and Hare were body snatchers, but they were in fact just cold-blooded murderers who sought to make as much money as possible. In the body snatching capital Edinburgh, the two lived and operated a boarding house on Tanners Close, and following the unfortunate death of one of the residents who owed a substantial amount of back rent, the two sold his corpse on for a considerable amount of money to Dr Robert Knox. Following this, they began to manipulate the market, and both would attract drifters and people off the periphery of society to the boarding house. They targeted people who they thought would not be missed, in order to not raise too much attention when they disappeared. The victims were strangled, and the body would be taken to the streets of Edinburgh's old town, under the cover of darkness, and delivered to Dr Knox for a fee of £10. This was repeated 16 times, and they were known to have committed the murders of at least 16, but some historians debate that the real number was in fact closer to 30. The fact they got paid a large amount of money drew the men to the idea of being resurrection murderers, but they weren't body snatchers, just murderers. Eventually they were caught when they flew too close to the sun, murdering more slightly high-profile members of Edinburgh's community, and they were caught literally in the act. The industry was all driven by the fact that before the Anatomy Act of 1832, the only legal way corpses could be supplied for anatomical use was when someone was condemned to death and executed. Those who were sentenced to dissection by the courts were often those who were guilty of committing extremely dark crimes. This sentence did not happen, enough for the university's liking, and the bodies simply were in too high demand. There was a need for around 500 cadavers a year, but only around 10% of these were provided through the executions. Interfering with a grave was seen as a misdemeanour and wasn't punishable with a serious reprisal. Usually, body snatchers were only fined or thrown in prison for a short period of time. This led to body snatchers taking the risk, and in some cases the authorities and local governments turned a blind eye to the grim business. It was happening so much that in Edinburgh, it was said that graveyards looked like zoos, as there was a sheer amount of iron cages over graves protecting them, almost like wild animals are caged in a zoo. Body snatchers as time went on became more skilled too, and more crafty. Often they would use wooden spades to exhume, as they made less noise than metal ones, and they would often start at the head end. When they got to the coffin, they broke it open, put a rope around the corpse and dragged it out. Some made sure they did not steal any valuables such as jewellery, as this carried a harsher punishment. 
They even replaced the turf on top of the grave so that the family members would not notice what had happened, and many didn't, for family members would visit graves and simply there would be nothing in them, as the robbers had been the night before and they did not know. This happened all around the world in many different countries, and there have even been more recent cases of body snatching. However, out of spite, perversion and other intentions, rather than to simply make money like in centuries before. As mentioned, there were ways to prevent body snatchers, but they became rather skilled and dedicated to their work to make money as best as they could, at a time where vast amounts of the poor in the UK were starving and dying from malnutrition and disease, the concept of digging up a dead body and selling it for a wage that would feed a family for a long time seemed too attractive for many people to turn down. Body snatching was later ended when the Anatomy Act of 1832 was passed, which allowed unclaimed bodies and those donated by families to be used for anatomical study. Greater licensing was also enforced for those inside of anatomy, but body snatching is an infamous and notorious line of work that for decades haunted cities in Britain. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.